Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course Development Operations for ABAP with Git Enable Change and Transport System in SAP S4 HANA. This is week one, which mainly covers the basic ideas of the Git Enable CTS. And the first unit tries to answer the question, why at all GCTS? My name is Ulrich Auern. I'm the product owner of the development team, ABAP Managed Change Control. And in this role, I'm responsible for the Git Enable CTS, the change and transport system, GCTS. And I'm very happy that you are interested in getting to know what it is, how it works, and most important, how it can help you to improve your software de development and delivery processes. In the first week, we will talk about the motivation why we offer GCTS. And the presentations and exercises are about how you prepare your system for the Git enabled CTS. In the following weeks, we will then learn how to use it and how to leverage the potential. In this first unit, we want to answer the question, why GCTS? Since we started this project, I was often asked, why are you changing the transport system? This is one of the most stable assets in the ABAP world, and we have established processes on top that are now well known to everybody in our company. Don't touch it. Here's my answer. Have a look at the potential. Then maybe you get an idea how to leverage new possibilities that have been coming up outside the ABAP world and how to combine them with the unique features of the ABAP change and transport system. From the beginning in 1992, the change and transport system was an integral part of the ABAP server. Every change was and is recorded automatically in a so-called transport request. When these transport requests are released, these changed artifacts, development objects, customizing data are ready for being imported into subsequent systems. For this purpose, you configure a system landscape with transport routes, defining how these changes make their way through the landscape, through quality assurance, test and training systems, until they finally end up in the productive system. And Maybe you are using tools that help you to handle all these transport requests, for example, to import them in the correct sequence. This is important because each transport contains a certain delta. So you have maybe added some process tools and processes on top, like, for example, the change request management or similar tools that helps you to keep the house clean. And with CTS Plus, we offer the possibility to include also non-ABAP systems so that classic CTS was able to offer similar processes also in heterogeneous environments. But the world outside ABAP has changed and almost everybody is talking about development operations. New processes like continuous integration have been established to help developers to continuously deliver corrections and features to the productive environment. And new tools have been established that support these processes. Git is a new de facto standard for managing development artifacts. Automation servers, for example, Jenkins, are used to automate development operations processes. So there's a new way how to develop and deliver software, how all this is organized. And the question is how ABAP-based development can be integrated into this world. The Git enabled CTS combines the good features from both worlds. Automatic change recording will stay as it is, but when changes are released, they are no longer stored in import queues. Instead, they are committed to a Git repository. From there, you can provide the content to other ABAP systems. Underneath, the features of the classic transport tools are used under the hood. By storing ABAP artifacts in a Git repository, you can share source code on Git and of course use the Git repository 
as, as the location where your original objects are stored, including their version history. But you can also automate the development and delivery processes with pipelines. In the end, you are able to manage ABAP development similar to what you do in other environments. So the new world of ABAP development will look like this. The Git repository is the new center of the world. Develops, developers use the development system like editors to commit changes. And everything you need in another system will be pulled from the Git repository. So combining CTS with a Git repository makes the GCTS. Let me introduce some usage scenarios that have been impossible before. Maintaining several releases of some software components so far requires to set up parallel system tracks and complicated work when doing double maintenance. You may know this as switch over or retrofit. Um, with GCTS, you can maintain several releases of a software component with one system by switching between branches. For example, a development and the maintenance branch or feature branch and maintenance branch. As we can't change the DNA of an ABAP server, you can work only on one branch at a certain time, of course. But at last, you won't need several systems anymore. So you may switch the system to a maintenance branch, make a small correction, commit it, push it, merge it to the master branch, check it, test it, and then finally merge it to the production branch. And afterwards, you can switch the development system to the feature branch again and continue with your development work. By this, you can leverage the Git features, namely the merge branch feature for applying a certain bug fix, for example, in several code lines. You can also decentralize the ABAP development. So far, all development activities have been done within one system. All changes are immediately available for everybody else, but that may also mean that developers disturb each other when they maintain centrally used objects. And they may disturb each other when parallel development projects require to change the same objects. Having dedicated systems for users or user groups allows you to develop independent from each other. Changes become available for the others only after a development branch is merged to the master branch. The master branch may be pulled to a quality system where it is checked. And by this, you can also make your stuff available for the others. So it can be expected that you always work against a stable environment because you pull the stuff of the others at points in time that you define. And in the end, the software will make its way to the productive system. And of course, you can think about installing short-term or short-time leaving test systems be between so that you can automatically check every change before it is integrated into the master branch. So this is yeah, caring for software quality very early. So this is what we want you to take away from this first unit. GCTS is the option to harmonize non-ABAP processes and tools with ABAP. GCTS is planned as an alternative to the classic CTS but of course, the classic CTS will still be maintained and supported. And important to know, GCTS and classic CTS can be used in parallel. That allows you to start with pilot projects and keep the rest as it is for a period um, of time that you define. You find more information about GCTS in the blog post of our product manager and of course also on help.sap.com. So 
Now we are at the end of this unit. Thank you very much for listening and see you in the next unit where we will see GCTS in action. Bye bye, so long, auf Wiedersehen. Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course DevOps for ABAP with GCTS in SAP S4 HANA. Week 1, Unit 2, GCTS in Action. My name is Karin Spiegel and I'm a Product Manager. In this unit, we are going to take a look on how GCTS works. So it's really somehow the final way how working with GCTS is organized if you develop something and so on. It's not necessary that you understand each and every point in detail that I'm going to show right now. It's just to give you an introduction, an impression, how GCTS looks like and how it will work after you set it up. You will get an explanation for all the details in follow-on units. So, first of all, we are going to work with a system landscape which consists of two systems, a development system and a test system. This explanation is also valid for the follow-on units but you will get a more detailed explanation about this landscape and what to use when and how you can access it and so on in the follow-on units. So for now, it's just important that we have two systems, a development system where we will create something new and where we will commit the new stuff to a demo repository and that we have a second system, TST, where we'll later on use the new stuff that we created. All the details, how this is set up, how you use it, how you manage your repositories, how they get connected with ABAP and so on, will come in follow-on units. So don't get confused. It's just to give you an impression how GCTS in action works when you are a developer. So let's directly start with a demo to give you an impression. We have two systems. We have our Git enabled CTS enabled on our development system and we have it enabled on our TST system. What you can see here is what we call the GCTS app. Also, the details about this app will be explained later on. The important thing right now is only that we have one repository on GitHub, which is connected to our ABAP system, and that we have a transport layer, a virtual SID, that is connected to this repository and that is available on our system. So what we can see in here is there are already some commits. Commits are created as soon as you develop something. So whenever you release transport requests and later on tasks, new commits will arrive in here. But also this will be explained later on. The commits in here can be used to update your system to get a new state of your version of your development in a specific system. And the same connection is available on our TST system, same repository, same commits currently available in here. So what we are now going to do is we are going to do a little change to one small report. This report is part of a package. This package uses the transport layer that is connected to our repository. So that's how the basic connection works. The report just contains a little text and let's say the text is not correct. So welcome to the open SAP course GCTS is not correct. The title is different. So let's fill in the correct title. And then that's what we wanted to do. We have our new change and now we would like to make it available on GCTS so that it can be consumed by other systems. So what we need to do for sure, still as the normal development process, we need to activate our changes. We are asked for a title for a transport request and let's say we entered the correct title. So that's the change that we did and it's a good idea to use some meaningful request description in here, you will see later on why. Okay, so that's now our transport request, which contains our change stuff. You might know that when you work with ADT, you can find the changed or modifiable transport requests in here. And let's say that's all the changes that we need for now, so let's release them. So first release the task for sure, then release the transport request, And as soon as the transport request is released, we are done with our development. So that's the process how developers work as of today. 
They don't even realize a lot when they just has, touch an object that GCTS is used in the background. But as we know that GCTS is used, we can now see the effects that happen in our GCTS app. So here we are back in our development system in the GCTS app. And let's refresh this list of commits that we can currently see in here, that the new commit has arrived. And that's why I said that it's important to use the correct or meaningful description of the transport request. You can now find the correct title in here, the description of our transport request. So that's our latest commit. It's always available as a link, so you can click on the respective commit and you can find out the differences, what was changed in the respective commit. This will bring you directly to, in our example, GitHub, but it can also be other Git providers, and you can see what was changed in the coding. Okay, so now on our development system, this commit is in bold, so this is the active commit. If we now switch to our test system and refresh the list in here as well, we can see that the new commit has arrived as well, but it is not active. So GCTS does never import anything automatically. You can later on in the last week find out how this can be automated, but in principle GCTS, like the classical CTS, does not import anything automatically into any system. The commit is now available. It can be activated in this system. So let's do it. We have two options. We can either activate a certain commit or we can say we would like to update our system to the latest commit. So that's what we're now going to do. And after that, as soon as it's activated, we will see that the latest commit is then written in bold. We get a success message that this commit was activated and you can see the latest commit is now also active in our TST system as well. So this means our coding, our changes, are now available in TST as well. So far for the demo right now. And let's take a look on what GCTS can do. So what we have seen is that we can use GCTS to transport a simple program. But in principle, GCTS supports you with all objects, all workbench objects that can be part of a transport request. The only thing that you need to do is you need to use the correct transport layer, so the correct virtual SID. And if an object, if a transport request makes use of that, then the objects that are part of this transport request will be pushed to GCTS, will be available in the respective repository as soon as you release the transport request. But there's more in ABAP systems. It's not just ABAP workbench objects, it's also customizing objects. And GCTS supports them as well. To be able to use customizing, your system needs to be on S4HANA 2020 at least. So that's the first release when you can use customizing. In here, principle is the same. You have to use the correct target for your transport request. So this is how it's differentiated whether stuff is transported to Git or whether it uses the classical way of CTS of going to the import buffer of the follow-on system. So for customizing, there are some special rules. So TDAT and VDAT are available starting with 2020, but there's additional objects called CDAT, and for them you need to have SP1 of 2020 to be able to use it and an additional node. But with that, you should then be fine, and TCTS can be used for all of the objects that can be part of a transport request. So all of these objects can be pushed to a transport to a GitHub repository. So that's it for GCTS in action. What you should remember is Workbench and customizing objects can be handled via GCTS. The development tools that you know from the past, ADT or SEAT, are still valid. You can use both of them. It doesn't make any difference. SPRO is still the transaction to do customizing. All of them can be used. All of them will create transport requests and they can then be pushed to Git if GCTS is enabled, if the transport request makes use of a transport layer that is enabled for GCTS. And with this, you can use GCTS app to support your development process to see what has been pushed and so on. That's it for this unit. Thank you very much. Hope you got the points and let's see you in the next unit. Thank you. Bye.
Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course DevOps for ABAP with GCTS in SAP S4HANA. Week 1 GCTS Basics and Preparation. Unit 3 Introduction to the Exercises. My name is Harald Stevens. I'm a product manager at SAP. Week 1 is the week in which we introduce you to GCTS and in which we prepare the systems for use. We will perform lots of exercises during the course and I will give an overview what you can expect. This is the plan for the five weeks of the course. We will start with some preparations on GitHub in week one, where we create repositories for later use. Week two is packed with exercises. The overall goal is to set up the environment so that you can do transports of customizing and workbench objects using GCTS. In week three, we will then set some repository parameters to influence the behavior of GCTS. Here we will use these options to work with branches, merging and solving conflicts during the merge. In week four, we will dive deeper into the options you have to influence how GCTS behaves. For example, we will activate task-based committing. And week five will then show how to connect GCTS to a CI platform, like for example, Jenkins. Let's have a deeper look. Week one, as said, deals with preparing the systems for use with GCTS. The major step here is to run the GCTS enablement wizard. However, this can be done only once per system. Therefore, we cannot offer that as an exercise. However, we will show it to you in a demonstration. This has to be done in the development and in the test system. But then you get active by creating repositories on GitHub, which will be used to centrally store your changes in GitHub. In week two, then, we will make use of this setup. First, we create a token on a GitHub and store it in the credential store of GCTS. This enables you to connect automatically with GitHub. The next step is to create local repositories in GCTS and connect them to your central repositories on GitHub. Then we will do some customizing and create workbench objects. These changes will then be committed to your central GitHub repositories. And then we will retrieve these changes from the repository to your target system, to the test system. Yeah, pull the, uh, the changes into your target system. And then we will look into the GCTS app, how all these activities reflect there in the uh, sense of logs and um, activity uh, um, information. Week three then shows you how you can influence the behavior of GCTS by setting repository parameters. For example, we will enable uh, to work with branches and then merge these branches when, for example, um, several developers are working on the same object in different branches. This can cause conflicts when merging these branches and we will show how to solve these conflicts. In week four, we will then show uh, how to influence the behavior by using bodies. Yeah? And one of these activities is to switch to task-based committing. Yeah? By default, GCTS um, commits the changes when uh, releasing a transport request, but we can switch, switch that to a task-based committing. We will then introduce the registry and register objects there and then use the registry in the development process. In the last week, week five, 
we will then connect GCTS to a CI platform, in our case now Jenkins. This enables you to set up a pipeline which performs automatic tasks after a change has been committed. For example, running automated unit tests. All exercises will be demonstrated in the corresponding units so that you have a video showing you all the steps necessary. On top of that, we have additional material which is available for each week on the exercises in this week, which shows you a detailed explanation of all the exercises, including screenshots. We also provide there the URLs and excellent information you need. But of course, every participant who registers for the exercises gets his personal user and this will be sent to him when registering for the exercises. So this brings me to the end of the unit. So what should you remember? The exercises, as you have seen, will cover the full range from very basic to quite advanced activities inside GCTS. Some steps which can only perform, be performed once will be shown in demonstrations. And we will have additional material with extensive explanations of all the exercises. Thanks a lot for joining this unit. And in the next unit, I will show you the landscape which we'll be using for the exercises. See you then. Hello and welcome to the OpenSAP course DevOps for ABAP with GCTS in SAP S4HANA. Week 1, GCTS Basics and Preparation, Unit 4, Introduction to the Exercise Landscape. My name is Harald Stevens and I'm a Product Manager at SAP. We will in this uh, unit show you briefly how our exercise landscape looks like and how you access the different tools we will be using. So the overall picture of our landscape looks like this. We have two S4HANA systems, DEF and TEST, and we connect them for the GCTS exercises to a central GitHub repository. In the last week, we will then additionally use uh, Jenkins as a CI uh, server to run pipelines for the exercises. Which tools we'll be using? We have on the one side for creating and changing workbench objects, we will be using the ABAP development tools. Um, you can optionally also use the old, in quotes, uh, tools, uh, Transaction SE80 and others to work with the workbench objects, but in our demos we will use the ABAP development tools. Then we will have SPRO, which is the central entry point for customizing uh, in the S4HANA system, so we will do some customizing to show that this is also possible to be worked with in a GCTS. And then, of course, we have the central app, the Fiori app, to work with GCTS itself. And this will be accessed via your browser. On top of that, we will look once in a while into uh, GitHub, how this looks like um, in the yeah, uh, overall uh, GitHub repository. And last not least, we will access Jenkins. That will also happen via your browser. A few words about the, the systems. DEF and TEST are, as I said, SAP S4HANA 2021 systems, so quite new. The data to connect to them you will, uh, will be shared to, with you in a, um, a confirmation mail you receive after you have registered for the um, exercises. Additionally, we will also share them in the um, exercise descriptions in the additional material. Please note that all syst the systems are shared between all participants, uh, which means the 
objects we are creating during the exercises have to follow specific naming conventions so that we do not override other people's work. On top of that, of course, we uh, have to limit the number of parallel users because we cannot create the systems with an unlimited size. So therefore, we will have uh, a limit of users, potentially one to 200 people at the same time. So it might happen that you don't get access immediately. If so, please try later. And of course, if you have completed your work, please log out so that others can uh, enter the system. And of course, as we are sharing the systems between all people, it would be very nice not to break the systems. Um, we will be doing backups of the system each day so that in the worst case, we can go back to the day before. But of course, that would hurt lots and lots of people. So please be careful. Now let me show you how these different tools would be used during the course. First of all, you need um, a subgui lock-on uh, to get into the systems. We will provide you with the user and a, a password, which we will, you have to change at the first login, and then you get into the well-known ABAP world. So let me just start that. And I will log in with the user, will, which uh, will look like a little bit like that. So, for example, this one here. So now you're in the uh, SAP ABAP system and you will now uh, be able to go to the well-known uh, transactions like, for example, the S-Pro for working with the uh, customizing and then you enter the uh, reference uh, implementation guide and then we will pick one or two of these um, customizing activities to show the transport of customizing objects. Secondly, we have for the workbench, we'll be using the um, ABAP workbench tools, uh, development tools, ADT. And of course, when you have configured your uh, sub lock-on, to use uh, um, to access the demo systems or the test the exercise systems, then it's quite easy to do the same and to to retrieve the information um, into your um, ADT. And here I have already done this for the development system, so you can see that I'm now able to work with ADT uh, with our development system. For example, I've created a package. And so we will be using this, this as well. And of course, we are also planning to handle the transport requests inside ADT. Then um, the main part, of course, will happen in the GCTS app. And uh, again, this will be accessed via a link in the browser. And then you will be asked to log on to the Fury Launchpad. And initially, this will be empty, yeah? but then it, you can um, add your the, the GCTS app to your home screen by using the Edit Home Page button, and then add the new the app by searching for GCTS, and then you are able to uh, pin this app to your home screen. Okay, after you've done that, you can click on the, the uh, GCTS app and then you will enter your uh, GCTS app. And in this case, for example, I've already created two repositories and that's where we'll be working. Yeah, so I can also jump into that uh, and see that, um, for example, we have already one initial commit uh, stored in this repository. 
On the other side, as said, we will be using GCTS, um, uh, GitHub. And here, this is the counterpart on the GitHub side. So we have here the um, uh, corresponding repositories in GitHub, um, where, uh, for example, we have now this initial uh, commit um, for uh, the Workbench repository. Last not least, uh, we will also be using uh, Jenkins. Uh, I have only now a screenshot because it's not yet set up in our uh, in that stage. But anyway, the entry will be look will be looking a little bit like that. So where you have the option to create a new item, for example, a new pipeline, and that's what we will be doing. Okay, let's go back to our uh, slides. So this would be the uh, final slide of this of this unit. So what have you learned? We have two S4HANA uh, systems, dev and test, which will be using dev for creating the objects, test for yeah, pulling the objects or receiving the objects. Um, we will be working mainly with the GCTS app, which will be accessed via a browser. It's a Fiori app. And then the landscape is shared between all participants, so please be careful. Thanks a lot for joining that session. And uh, in the next session, we will then really use the uh, setup wizard for GCTS to enable GCTS in the S4HANA system. Yeah, see you there. Thanks for joining. Hello and welcome to the Open SAP course DevOps for ABAP with GCTS and SAP S4HANA, Week 1, Unit 5, Configuration to enable GCTS. My name is Karin Spiegel and I'm a Product Manager. In this unit, we are going to configure GCTS, so you will do the enablement of GCTS to make it run for all your developers. First, which systems do you need? So you need your Git platform for sure. In our example, in this course, it will be GitHub. You need your systems. So you will have, for example, a development, a test and a production system, which are ABAP runtimes. You can have more, you can have less. In our example, in this course, we will only have a development and a test system. And in addition, you can have a CI server, for example, Jenkins, as we will use it in this course, where you can host your pipelines to automate your development processes. And what do you need to install on these systems? So for GitHub, there's nothing special that you need to install. On the ABAP side, you need to have SAP S4HANA 1909 at least to be able to use GCTS 2020 if you like to use customizing. In this course, you will see how GCTS works on SAP S4HANA 2021. In addition, on each of the ABAP servers that is involved, you need to install an SAP machine or a comparable JRE. JRE version 1.8 is required, and for the SAP machine, version 11 would be fine. In addition, we have some SAP nodes. You can find them listed in our central node about GCTS. So there you can find what needs to be installed to fix some stuff, to get additional functionality from time to time. So you will find all of this in the node. On the CI server, there's nothing special to you. Install. So we don't have any plugin or whatever that you could provide to your CI server. <clears throat> but what we have is some pipeline steps in Project Piper. You will find them in a further unit, more to the end of the course, where you will get explanations and also the chance to do an exercise to find out how Project Piper works and to see the steps that we provide for GCTS. And what do you need to configure? So after you have installed all the stuff, then you need to do some configuration. On the Git side, what you need is a repository which contains an initial commit. On the ABAP side, Fiori needs to be enabled. So we do have a GCTS Fiori UI that needs to be used to work with GCTS. We have some special authorizations that you need to assign to your users. There are some parameters that you need to set to initialize your systems. And that's what we are going to do later in this unit in the demo. 
After you did all of these configurations, you can start working with GCTS. So that would mean you can clone your repository to your development system, for example, at first. You can create branches and so on. So that's up to you how you decide to work with Git inside ABAP. On the CI server side, you can set up a project. You also need to provide credentials. So your CI server needs to know about the development test system and so on. So it needs to be able to log on when a pipeline runs. You have to set up some libraries and you have to set some hooks in the repository. But you will see all of this later on towards the end of the course. For the configuration of GCTS, we provide an enablement wizard. It guides you through the most important steps to set all the required parameters. So this wizard is available starting with SAP S4HANA 2020. And there you can provide the parameters. You can also set them manually if you prefer. But um, it will help you to make sure that at least the initial parameters that you need to be start able to start working with GCTS are set. At the end of the wizard, you will find a health check. This will provide you with information whether all the configurations are now OK or whether there are some issues. So you can filter in the health check for warnings. If there are errors, you can for sure also filter for warnings. And you can see all the checks that were done to make sure that GCTS runs correctly on your system. In our demo, we will now do this enablement wizard on one of our systems that we use in this course. So the assumption is, and what is already done on our systems, Java is installed, so we know where our Java engine runs. The Fiori enablement is done, and certificates are imported. So to be able to use GCTS, you need to have the option to set connections to Git from ABAP. And these require certificates, and these are already imported on our systems. In the demo, we will see how this enablement wizard works, and we will see the results in the health check. OK, so let's start with the demo. So we will do it on one of our systems. In here, nothing is done. We don't have any repositories. The only thing is that I'm logged on with a user who is named GCTS Observer, who already has added the GCTS app to his home screen. And I'm doing this with the user GCTS Observer, because during this wizard, an Observer job will be scheduled that runs in SM37, so there you can find it later on. And this Observer job needs to have a user that can be used by all people who are using GCTS. Whenever you push objects to Git, you need the option to write to this Git repository. So you need permissions. And the writing is done by the Observer user. So every repository needs to have this user who runs the Observer job as a collaborator. And therefore, we now use for the configuration a generic user that can be provided to all of the developers or whoever creates the repositories. Later on, when we did the configuration, we will change the Observer user from a dialogue user to a system user so that no one can log on with it again. But for the configuration, the easiest part is if you use the Observer user as a dialogue user so that you can do the configuration with this user. OK, so let's start. This is the GCTS app. You will see or learn more details about it in the following units of this course. You've already seen it in a previous unit when you saw how GCTS works in general. So you don't worry about what you can see in here. We will learn about this. The only thing that we need right now is this Enable GCTS button here on top. OK, and what we will do is we will now provide different parameters. So one thing is the GCTS directory. That's a directory on your ABAP system where the different repositories, the local repositories, can be cloned to, where all of the files will be stored. So we will now add this parameter. I prepared that, how it is configured on our system. So what is the intention, where the local repositories, to which repository they, or to which file they should be cloned to. So that's the first parameter. So this is now checked. And we can go to the second step, where we now have to provide the path to our Java runtime. So let's choose the correct parameter 
for the Java runtime, which is our Zap machine in Java. And this is how it was installed on our system. So that's something that you need to ask your administrator for to use this Java during your configuration. Okay, so that's the second step. In step three, we have to provide the path to the ABAP to VCS jar. So that's somehow our client, which enables the communication between ABAP and Git. And this path also needs to be provided. And we set this parameter and save it. The last step is now to provide, um, schedule the observer job. And this can be done by just saying initialize system. This will create the observer job. We can see that this is done. We can now go for our last step, which is not really something else to configure, but it provides a list of the parameters that we set. And we can go to check system health. So this will bring up the health check and we can see that our configuration is now okay. We can see the different parameters provided are correct. So we have the Git client, we have the Java runtime, we have the working directory. After you did your configuration, you can also see the parameters in the GCTS app. So you can see the name of these parameters, how they are named on the system, and you can see the values that you've set. So that's now done. Our GCTS is in principle ready for usage. What we need to do in addition is we can maintain the job or we can check the job. So for this observer user, there should now be a job which is released. So let's execute this check and we can see this job is now here. In addition, we should now change our user in SOC over one. So if we check the observer user, we can see that it is right now a system user. And we should change this dialog to system user so that no one later on can log on with this user again. So we did our configuration. We can now switch back to our presentation and we have reached the end of the unit. What you should remember is GCTS requires some configuration. So it's not working out of the box when you install the system. An important thing is that Java is required on each ABAP system that uses GCTS. And you have to provide some certificates to access the Git remote system as you require them in your system landscape. So we have reached the end of the unit. Thank you very much for listening. Hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next unit. Thank you. Hello and welcome to the OpenSP course DevOps for ABAP with GCTS in SAP S4 HANA. Week 1, GCTS Basics and Preparation, Unit 6, Create a Repository on GitHub. My name is Harald Stevens. I'm a Product Manager at SAP. This unit is the first chance for you to get active. It's containing or your first exercise. And in this exercise, you will create two repositories on GitHub. Before we start, let's have a brief look onto Git. Git is a version control system, which means that you are storing files in so-called repositories. And when you have done changes to these files, you can commit these changes, which then creates a new version of your repository. These commits allow you to jump back and forth between different versions of your files and so move back and forth in the history of your development. Normally you would work locally on your, your, in your repository, so you would clone the repositories from a central place to your local file system and then work there. Repositories can be private or public. If they are private, 
you have to define who is allowed to see and work with this repository. If they're public, everybody can see them. And repositories uh, can consist of several branches. So branches mean that you are uh, trying to do distributed development yeah, so that several people can work on the same files at the same time if they are in different branches. And then if you uh, are completed with your work, you can merge the branches together again so that the changes are put together into one branch again. Normally, you would use uh, branches temporarily for some specific project, for example, for creating a new feature. There are several incarnations of Git uh, in the market, and GitHub is one of them. It's a very popular one, but of course, there are other ones like uh, uh, Bitbucket or uh, um, GitLab and so on. So basically, um, they are all using the same con uh, concepts from Git, uh, but they are separate services. We are using GitHub because it's currently best supported by GCTS, but GCTS supports other Git uh, types as well, and we will come to that later in the course. What you will do in this exercise is you will create two separate repositories for customizing and for Workbench. Additionally, uh, later on next week, uh, we will create an, a token inside GitHub for authenticating against GitHub from GCTS. So these are the steps necessary. You will create two repositories and then you will add an observer job user as collaborator to your repositories. That is necessary because in GCTS, we have a so-called observer job running. Uh, it's a background job which gets automatically active when specific activities in GCTS are triggered. And then this observer job user needs to authenticate or needs to connect to your repository to perform actions inside GitHub. Therefore, we have to name him as a collaborator in your repositories. Now, let's see how this works. Of course, you can use your own GitHub account if you already have one, but uh, suppose you don't have one and you would like to start with a fresh um, uh, account. So you go to github.com, which is the homepage of GitHub, and then you sign up for GitHub. You need an email address which has not been yet used to create a GitHub account. So I take this one here. Then you need a password for that. Okay. And a pass uh, username I would suggest to use the username we have assigned to you in the confirmation mail when signing up for the exercises. Okay, you see the, the username is still available, not yet used in GitHub. I don't wanna have product updates and now I have to solve a puzzle to prove that I'm not a robot. I have to pick a spiral galaxy. So this one looks like a spiral galaxy. And this one. And so I'm done. Okay, I can create my account now. So now GitHub has sent a launch code to the email address I've specified. So I have to go there and retrieve the launch code and enter it here. And now I'm welcome to GitHub. I could now personalize my account. I will skip that. And now I'm in GitHub 
with an empty account. So I said we have to perform two uh, um, activities. One is creating two repositories, and the other one is to add the observer job user. So let's start with the repositories. I click here on create repository, and you see below my account, I can now create repositories as much as I uh, like to. And now I create one which is called Workbench, which will store later on the uh, Workbench um, objects from ABAP. I make it a private uh, repository and quite important, I add a readme file here so that we automatically create a first automatic commit when creating this repository. Otherwise, GCDS has difficulties to um, clone this first repository later on. So then think of it, private, add a readme file, and then create the repository. So now I have one uh, repository, which is called Workbench. There's an initial commit with some uh, commit ID. And now I do the same thing again for my customizing objects. Okay, go back to the home page and create a new repository. This time I call it customizing. Again, a private one and a readme file. So now I have two repositories. One is called customizing, one is called workbench. And now I have to add the um, observer job user as a collaborator. I do that in the settings area. And in the settings area, I have the tab manage access. And now I have currently no uh, other collaborators in my uh, uh, repository, so I have to add somebody here. And now I um, start typing the username, and it is called GCTS Observer. And at some point, you get this user, you pick it, and you add this uh, user to your repository as a collaborator. You can see here that um, this, has, this user has to confirm that he wants to get into your repository. That is something we as OpenSP team have to, do, have to do for you. So this can take a few hours until this uh, um, um, response is there. But still, that's all you have to do from your side to, to add this user. But now we must not forget to do the same thing for uh, the other repository as well. So I'm going back to my home page. And I now jump to the workbench um, repository and repeat these steps. Go to settings, manage access, add a person to that, and it's the GCTS observer, and pick that one, add it to the repository as a collaborator, and again, it's now waiting to be accepted. Yeah, that's the content of your exercise. Um, good luck with it. And now let's go back to the slides to finish that unit. So what have you learned in this uh, brief demo? So a Git provider is needed for repositories. Yeah? And we have chosen for uh, these exercises to use GitHub. The authentication Later on, we'll uh, use a token, but basic authentication, meaning user and password, would also be possible. Both could be stored in the GCTS uh, credential store. Yeah, so this concludes this unit and also concludes this week. Thank you, thanks so much for joining and hope to see you again next unit next week. <laughs>